Hello again. In today's short video, I'm going to show how to run a workflow on a paired set of FASTQ files from a bacterial isolate that was sequenced on an Illumina MySeq instrument. So here we are again on our homepage for the UF Research Computing instance of Galaxy. To the right, you can see our uh, the, the toolbar that has the history in it. To the left, we have the various tools that are available in Galaxy. And of course, on our header, these different areas, which we've kind of gone through a little bit. So the one I'm going to focus on today is uh, this history tab. And if we hover over the two, these buttons to the right, we can see there's a couple options here. Refresh history, create new history, uh, view all histories, and then history options. And if you click on this, there's a number of things that you can do, including delete this history, copy it, share it, uh, or marking it as hidden or private. So the first thing we're going to do, if we're going to want to uh, create a new history, we can click on this plus button. And it will come up with a new history that says unnamed history. And then we can change the name by highlighting that field and typing in it. Assembly demonstration, we can call it. Hit enter, and that will then create this new history. Now, the first thing I want to do is add data to this history. Uh, if we go to our shared data, I'm going to click on data libraries, my uh, folder, and you can create folders on here as well, but you should have a home folder on there. And I've created a, a folder for some demo information here. And what I have in here is about 10 sets of reads from Streptococcus pneumonia serotype 3 isolates. And they are actually named based on their NCBI or SRA accession number. And I always use the same convention with naming. Underscore one and underscore two are to denote the forward and reverse reads for each one of my isolates. If you're using the data straight off of the uh, MySeq, it'll usually be R1 and R2. I can share some scripts or some basic code to rename your isolate files. I, I like these simpler formats. And you can also uh, do it manually. It, it would take a long time if you have a number of isolates to do, but if you're trying to process just a few different, uh, a few different strains, then it shouldn't be really a big deal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick, uh, I'm gonna click here to select a pair of these isolates. And I'm going to import this into a history. So I can uh, cl click on this button here. Oh, wait, let's see. So ex export to history, and I'm going to select as data sets. And it should give me options for which, um, which history I want to export it to. You can see I have a number of histories in my history. And I'm going to select the first one, which is the one we just created, assembly a demonstration and click the import button. All right, now we can go back to our analyze data tab after we see that those selected data sets have been added. And you should see them in the history right here. Now what we're gonna do is uh, under workflow, I'm gonna click on this and you see we're still in our history over here to the right. I'm going to click the de novo assembly, which we went through in the previous uh, video. Uh, click the drop down, and I'm going to hit the run button. And so we're going to go through this one at a time now. Uh, we have the input data sets, the forward and reverse reads. You're usually always going to have to change this to the appropriate input read. So the forward read should be the underscore one or R1 if you're using those data straight from the sequencer underscore two for the reverse read. We see our uh, trimmatic step, which we don't need to, to change any parameters. We can go through the assembly statistics. And the main thing we're gonna have to change is if we go down here to the annotation with PROCA, as we discussed in the previous video, you can see that locus tag, which we're leaving blank, and then genus and species. Now again, I, I let this able to be set at work at uh, runtime so that you can do this for multiple species. So for me, I'm going to put streptococcus pneumonia in here. And that way, that'll be in our annotation file at the end of it. 
and I'm not going to change anything with the kingdom or the uh, code. And that should be all the parameters I have to set for this. And I'm going to click Run Workflow. And then you should see all of these steps load into that history. And as it starts um, working, we'll see these turn from gray to yellow, which means that uh, they're running. So now we just saw the uh, Trimomatic start to run on the input reads. And so it's yellow. And then as those complete, they will turn green and it should start the next step. If they fail, then they will turn red. And it, actually, I set this up so that in this example, uh, the we're going to see an error with the annotation, or I'm sorry, with the assembly step. So we will be able to see what happens when there's an error, how to address error reports, and then also how to uh, restart the analysis from that same point uh, if you're able to fix that error by changing a setting, for example. Uh, in this case, our unicycler version, or I'm sorry, the, the annotation step is what's going to fail. The version that's installed on Proca needs to be updated. So uh, we'll look and see how to change that, uh, well, how to address the, the error in there and report something if you think it's something that needs to be fixed on the Galaxy side of things and not something that's a uh, parameter wise. Uh, so when we come back, we'll come back to this, but uh, a couple quick other notes. You can leave this workflow now. You can go do other things. Uh, we can go edit our workflows. We can go view another workflow, and this will all run in the background. So we'll uh, we'll come back and see how this uh, this ran, and then we'll also talk about assessing each one of these steps, for example, Traumatic using the output from FastQC.